everybody, I'm David Acevedo. Welcome to my studio located here at the Alliance for the Arts campus, part of the Union Artist Studios. So this is my studio. This is where all the magic happens. I do have to tell you that some of these paintings have turned around because they're for a new exhibit coming up. I don't want to show them yet. You artists might know what I'm talking about. But let me show you some of the tools that I use for creating my artwork. So I use all kinds of things to create my artwork. Um, I do like to experiment a lot. So you see that some of these tools are not exactly the typical uh, tools for painting, but that is what keeps me entertained. That's what keeps me going. So I use anything from uh, mini squeegees like these to uh, move the paint from side to side. This is made out of rubber. This one, for example, is a regular spatula used for uh, spackling. This is uh, metal, it's pretty neat. I leave the paint on it because sometimes after it dries, it creates interesting texture. Um, big brushes, even a toothbrush is great for um, a lot of um, little sprinkling uh, painting. Um, normal tools such as you know, mixers and palettes and things like that. Um, rulers are very important too for the kind of work I do. Rollers that are normally used for other uh, techniques such as block printing, which I'm gonna show you uh, a little bit later today. And uh, not so common uh, paints or uh, stains or finishes such as gold and uh, in powder or in paint mode. So I'm gonna show you the basics of block printing. So this is an example of an image printed using the block printing technique. It all starts with a carved block with a linoleum surface. You will need tools to do your carving and you also need a, the actual block and then paints. And I'm gonna show you what I have. Um, this is my carving tools, speedball um, with different um, tips with different sizes for you to make different lines or different carving lines on your block print. There's different kinds of uh, block, uh, blocks. Um, this one, obviously I don't have one that is not carved yet. I'll show you though um, how to make some carving on this one. This is one that I prefer to use because it's, it's got a thicker uh, base of wood on it. There's some that are like flexible like these. This is probably like the ones you'll find at a regular craft store. Um, and you can also do a similar technique on just plain wood. Um, let me show you the idea behind the block printing. It's clearly explained with just a stamp. Basically, the positive spaces are the ones that contain the ink and you stamp. Just with the block printing ink, we're not exactly stamping, but I'll show you in a minute how it works. So what kind of paint do you need? It's not your typical acrylic oil paints for block printing. You need specific block printing ink. Um, different colors, different sizes, different containers, but they all work about the same. Other materials you will need is a glass surface, rollers, black marker, a spoon, and obviously your carving tool. There are several ways to transfer a sketch or a drawing onto your uh, wood block or your linoleum block. Um, unfortunately, we don't have enough time to show all the techniques, but one easy way is for you to simply draw the image onto the surface with a black marker. Then we're ready to carve. You want to carve your negative spaces out. For example, in this section, I want this black line to be printed. Therefore, I want to carve around it, always carving outwards. I want to make sure that the line is sharp. This is an old uh, block print that I created and used many times. Um, I just ink it again so I can see what are the spaces that are either need a little carving or uh, need a little retouching. Um, or if I want to add something to it. For example, as you can see, it's got ink already, which I'll show the process in a minute. Um, if I want more details not printed, which means that they'll show as um, negative spaces, I'll just take some of these chunks out. 
Uh, I don't recommend leaving the paint on the block for too long because it'll dry and then it'll be harder for you to get it off the block. But I just wanted to show you other things that you can do once you have created and inked your block. If it happens that you get paint in areas where you absolutely don't want uh, ink, I should say, um, just carve it out. There's also several ways of having what we call a register, which means it is a place where you put your block and you know you're gonna put it in the same place all the time in order to also to keep the paper in the right location for you to print. The glass surface is used to put the ink onto the surface so you can roll it onto your roller. So this will make it easier for you to apply the ink or the pigment to the block. Here's an example. This is another block print already carved. The roller is full of ink, so I'm just going to roll the paint. And as you can see, all these positive spots or positive spaces are clearly visible. That is one it's going to print on your paper. see I used a spoon to press or push the ink or the pigment onto the paper. I just basically set it on the register, put the paper in place, and started rolling onto the surface until I could see that the ink was adhering to the paper. Then I just spilled it off and we have a little sample. Here. kinds of papers you can use for block printing. The ideal paper is rice paper, uh, Japanese rice paper. I happen to have this mango paper, which is a natural based paper, um, handmade, very interesting um, texture on it and very good for block printing. Watercolor paper could work, 140 pound is the one that I recommend for thickness. Um, you might have a little bit of a harder time using the spoon to press the ink onto the paper, but depending on your product, project, it might work. Um, there's also 3,000 pound presses that you can find at your local uh, art center or art uh, studio. And those are ideal for making any kinds of prints. Hope you had a good time with me in my studio and I hope you learned something. Now let me go because I gotta get back to work.